Welcome, everybody. Um, this is Tony Mould, the Learning and Development Coordinator with the AOT, AOE team. And uh, I'm very happy to have today uh, Mr. Brian Gallagher, the Vice President of Corporate Development for Graker. During the presentation, uh, you will be asked to answer some polls. So you can select the answers directly in the pop-up window, which will appear in your screen. Uh, you also can use the chat box. Our speakers will be happy to address questions as, at the end of, a, of the presentation. And uh, now let's talk a little bit more about our presenter, Mr. Brian Gallagher. As we mentioned already, Mr. Brian Gallagher is the Vice President uh, for Corporate Development for Breaker. He has served in executive uh, level strategic marketing and sales leadership positions with architecture, engineering, and construction organizations. He holds a bachelor's degree from Towson University and an MBA from Loyola University in Maryland. He also has served as an adjunct assistant professor at Loyola. He's a past chairman of the Associated Builders and Contractors for the, of the Carolinas and the co-author of two books. And he was named a top 20 construction influencer by Procore. So welcome, Brian. Great, thanks, Tony. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I appreciate everyone's time as we, we go through some, some challenging times uh, in, in our country, in our society, and, um, and certainly in our industry. Uh, uh, our our plan today is is to talk a little bit about the role of marketing during times of of challenging environments and dynamic environments. Uh, we'll start off by talking about what the role of marketing is. We'll look at current conditions, talk about the the current disruption that we're facing in our industry, how that impacts marketing, and then uh, we'll share some thoughts and ideas on different approaches for marketing messaging, um, being visible, engaging clients, and really some steps forward and paths forward that, that we can take as we're, as we're working through uh, these challenging times together. So really to start off with, what is, what is the role of marketing? And, and what is the role of marketing specifically as it relates to facing with um, COVID-19? And I'll just go back to what, what I see as a, fundamental foundational function of marketing for any organization, be it a business, and I realize we do have some folks on the line today from uh, trade organizations, but the, the role of the marketing strategy is really to set the direction and scope for a company or for an organization over the long term. And ideally that's achieving an advantage for the organization. And we do that through configuring resources. And, and one of the things we'll talk about today is that the configuration of resources uh, that we we had coming into this into into this uh, time is going to change, and we're going to need to change with it. Marketing strategy exists within a a changing and challenging environment, and we're certainly experiencing that firsthand today. And ultimately, the purpose of a marketing strategy is to meet the needs of our markets and all of our stakeholders, be it customers, be it or uh, members of organizations, some of our subcontractors, and others. So again, why, why do we have that, that marketing strategy? We want to make sure we as a, a company or organization, everyone's aligned and we're gaining commitment. The same thing applies to our marketing and communication approach during, during these challenging times. We also want to make sure we're keeping a pulse on markets and, and uh, even more so today than anything, it's important for us to keep a, a very good perspective on what's happening in our key markets, uh, key industries, and also for our clients. We want to use a marketing strategy to make strategic choices and decisions. Our, again, our strategy for marketing is going to need to change, and we need to make sure that we're in alignment and having consistent approaches with our core fundamental marketing strategy. Identify uh, sources of competitive advantage, and I'll talk a little bit later about how our messaging and how we communicate with our clients and how we articulate our advantages and our value proposition, how that can resonate even more during times of crisis. And aligning our sales resources to, to invest in and grow the business. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we need to engage with clients a little bit differently. Uh, processes and systems for how we communicate, informing stakeholders in our business. And again, there that's in, it's employees, it's customers, and also vendors and subcontractors. Objectives, strategy, and metrics how they might be changing here through times of crisis. And then we want to look at how we're measuring performance and ultimately making a profit. So these are really core fundamental concepts that we need to apply to 
whenever we're marketing and realizing that every single day our markets are changing, there's consistent dynamics and forces that are at work that are impacting what we're doing as a company or organization. Now, certainly the things that we've experienced the last couple months are, are unprecedented in our lifetime. Uh, there's uncharted waters, there's, there's change coming at us from lots of different directions. And you know, I think one of the really key, key things is there's so much uncertainty. Um, I've invested quite a bit of time the last couple of weeks uh, talking with, with um, some respected economists, uh, spending time on webinars and um, following some thought leaders and also engaging firsthand with people in different aspects in the industry. And, and certainly the one thing that I'll say is, is, is consistent is everyone's uncertain about the economy. If you look at just some of these recent articles and headlines from our industry trade press that we see, it's, it's very, very dynamic and changing. You're seeing, you see some highlights of some articles here from consultants projecting a, a construction tsunami in the third quarter to other things being completely canceled and, and, and stopped. So the projections and the forecasts are all across the board and the level of certainty in terms of a direction is is unknown but there are things that we can do as marketers to get a get a good sense of how these changes are impacting our industries and markets so again you look at the current market conditions how covid-19 is impacting our uh, the economics and the dynamics of the of the markets in which we work how the changes are being processed and there's going to be opportunities in certain markets uh, reading some recent trade press you're reading a lot about uh, there's going to be potential surge and reshoring of certain industries, potentially pharmaceutical, uh, medical supplies, medical devices, uh, even automotive, aerospace, supply chain, electronics, and some of the clean manufacturing. And other markets are certainly going to be slowed down. Certainly things like, like retail and other things are going to be impacted differently. But the thing that we, we can expect is that we're going to see change, change in how um, Owners are proceeding on their projects. Many owners today are reassessing their projects. They're looking at the projects from a schedule, scope perspective, and also more importantly, a budgetary perspective. In some cases, they're looking at alternative sources of financing, reassessing where how they're aligned with, uh, with their, their financial backers. We may see more delayed projects or even fewer projects or projects being scoped differently or broken up. We're possibly going to see more competition as um, certain markets dry up. There will be, as we see in other recessionary times, companies that are now going into additional markets or new markets are offering different services. And I think we're going to see a significant change in some contractual arrangements. Um, we certainly did see some of that in 2008, 9, and 10, uh, where, where risk is, is pushed off more into the contractor and ultimately down, kind of down the chain to the subcontractors. I think we could, we could potentially see some more changes there. So the reality is that we're really not going to understand the impact anytime soon, uh, but the, the, the change is going to continue to come. There's recently, just as recent as this morning, there's additional talk of, of stimulus. Uh, mainly for some small businesses. There's also talk of stimulus that's going to be geared towards infrastructure and institutional investment in, in things like hospitals and medical facilities. So really it's changing every day. And, and part of our role as marketers is really to keep our, keep our eyes open and look out over the horizon and try and interpret uh, how those dynamics and changes in the market are impacting us. So just current conditions from a marketing perspective. Uh, those of you that are, that, that, may represent trade organizations. Um, the ability for trade organizations to engage their membership is changing. Um, there might be, might be people canceling and not renewing. Um, clearly there's fewer shows and events. Most, if not all of the trade shows um, that I'm aware of, at least through summertime, have been, have been canceled or postponed or moved to the fall. Some are going to online environments. Uh, there's fewer networking events. Uh, PR, while still very important, is it's challenging. It's challenging to get the get the right message out to make sure it has an appropriate tone and, and resonates. Uh, old old marketing sales messages may not be appropriate for today's environment. 
people may be more difficult to reach. Um, obviously, as they're working from home, the, your ability to reach and network and interact with them uh, might be changing. And, and in many cases, uh, many of the colleagues I've talked to have um, been asked to reassess their marketing spend and look at how they, they can be more efficient with their dollars and um, have postponed some projects and looking at the marketing spend. So with that, Tony, I'd like to go ahead and do the first poll question. And that the question is specifically about your organization. Has, has your organization or company paused or delayed a marketing initiative? I'd like to get a sense of those on the phone, what type of impact it's had, it's had for each of you. So Tony's, Tony's gone, has gone ahead and put that poll up. So if you could um, go ahead and respond to that poll. Again, the question is, has your firm delayed or paused a marketing initiative? And again, this goes for trade organizations as well. If you've had to uh, cancel events or campaigns or initiatives. So if you could go ahead and complete that poll and we'll yep. compile those results here the next couple minutes. Yes, Brian. And, and give, uh, yes, Tony. Yes, uh, it seems that uh, all of participants have already voted. Okay, great. We'll have those results shortly. So one of the things I, I've, I've done recently is I've gone out and looked at uh, some trusted industry leaders and sources to get a sense of how other marketers, both in, in consumer, but more importantly, business to business environments are reacting. Um, this is a, a study that was recently released. Uh, this is from Advertiser Perceptions. And what they did here is they're doing a series of, of surveys over the course of a couple of weeks to really look at how companies are reacting. So if you look at this chart, you can you see the first wave is the light blue, and that test was was uh, taken, or that survey was sent out the week of March 17th through 20th, and the second one was sent out two weeks later, and they currently have the third one out, and I'm, I'm actually very excited, or I'm anticipating to see what those results are gonna be for the third wave. But you can see, you know, the first two waves, the majority of, of firms held back on their marketing campaigns or delayed them. Uh, some have canceled campaigns mid-flight mid or mid-campaign. Others are shifting how they're using their marketing dollars amongst different medias. And we're going to talk about where those dollars are going. Others have canceled a camp campaign. Um, and you can see that increasing just in the course of two weeks. An additional 10% more have canceled. Uh, others have paused. But it's interesting to see that drop. The number of people that have paused dropped from, from wave one to wave two. And I'm, I'm very anxious to see what the results are for, for wave three. And then the additional question that was added in wave two, did you launch a new campaign you hadn't previously scheduled? And a quarter of the firms responded that they did, they did launch a new campaign. Another, um, another study done by Advertiser Perceptions um, talked about the shift of ad spend and where they're shifting and over basically over over half almost 65 percent of companies agreed or completely agreed that they were shifting their dollars to more performance media or digital media where they can get more immediate feedback and impact another study here from ieee global spec uh, which which focuses on more business to business or industrial markets this survey was conducted of 200 uh, individual marketers in the industrial sector. And this specifically asked about how trade show budgets were going to be used. And you can see a little over a quarter of people are shifting the dollars from trade show budgets into digital advertising. About 15% are shifting those into generating or creating new content. Others are, will shift it to travel and almost half or 46% or will not be reinvesting that, that budget. So, Again, how this is impacting marketing, this is a, a study that came out this week from B2B Marketing Zone. 70% um, of companies have canceled live events for the next 60 days and more plan to cancel through the next six months. But what's interesting is 65% of those surveyed, and again, these are B2B marketers, uh, people that are marketing other companies, they plan on reallocating their dollars. And if you look at where they're reallocating their live event budgets, it's going to content creation focus on sponsoring webinars, uh, doing social media marketing, investing in, in how people find them through search engine optimization, SEO, and also shifting towards industry vertical lead generation programs. 
So we, all of us here on the call today have some, some influence or leadership responsibilities over marketing. Uh, could, be, could be responsibility for marketing dollars, marketing programs, initiatives, and also people. Could be marketing people and marketing um, and even salespeople. So each eco challenging economic time presents a lot of opportunities. And one of the key things we really need to start with is by, by analyzing and assessing where we might be vulnerable. Because what we want to do as marketers is really minimize the impact to our organization, uh, reevaluate and reassess our marketing efforts, and look at how we can, how we can structure ourselves, how we can, can, can recraft our marketing initiatives and maybe even recraft our messages to position our firms or organizations for future opportunities. So when it comes to assessing that exposure, the, the, one of the really key steps is to look at alternatives and look at different scenarios and how your organization or company could, could be impacted. So the, the scale at which you can do this could vary, but I have three examples here looking at a modest decline, maybe a severe recession or even depression. How, how will you as a firm react if any of these things happen? And also considering the length of a downturn and the severity or the depth of that downturn. So applying these models to your, to your membership base or to your client base is, is really a critical way to really start that assessment. Uh, FMI recently did a, um, released a, a report uh, just about a month ago. Uh, they also had an accompanying video uh, that went along with this. And what they did is they looked at multiple scenarios uh, related to non-building uh, buildings and well to all types of construction. The, the slides I'm sharing here right now are, are highlights from the non-building side. And what they assumed here, they had the trajectory or how the economy would be impacted, assuming the current trajectory, assuming an extended economic disruption, and the term they use, disruption to disintegration, and how the different markets would be impacted. So this, this type of scenario, when you look at that and you apply that to your markets, provides a, a good insight in terms of, of what if scenarios um, that, that we would want to react to. Here's another example. Um, this is specifically based on construction put in place and the value of those dollars put in place. Uh, this, this information is available on FMI's website. Again, it was released on March 20th, really good information. I, I encourage you to go download the, uh, the PDF and also view the accompanying videos. I think it might give you some good insight uh, on the industry and how to, look at, how to look at different what if scenarios and how they apply to your business. Um, the, other, the other lens to apply to this is looking at how we assess that disruption and what FMI attempted to do here, as you can see on this chart, they're looking again at the potential potential length of the decline and also the depth of the decline. And they attempted to plot how different market segments would react or respond uh, to two different scenarios. So again, I'm not, I'm not attempting to present FMI's conclusions here. I'm just trying to offer a perspective on insight on different lenses that you can apply to your market and to your clients. In this specific type of model, uh, you can use this, this thing specifically for uh, your 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 specific clients. You could also go in and use a similar model for those of you that have um, offices and divisions and even subsidiaries operate in different industries and different geographies of the country. Another uh, tool that, that could be useful, uh, this dates back um, actually to the, the last significant recession. This is um, a tool from an article in Harvard Business Review. And this was specifically done to assess uh, consumer buyer behavior. So more the consumer market, not the business to business market. But I do think it has uh, applications in our, in our business, in our industry. So the, this is from an article, How to Market in a Downturn. And what they, what har the authors from Harvard Business Review attempted to do is really look at your customer segments and kind of categorizing them in terms of how they make their buying decisions and how they're going to be influenced by a risk of a downturn. So if you look across the top, you know, the, the essentials, the treats, postponables and expendables. I think the same type of model can work to our industries and how we look at our owners and who's going to be spending, what, what construction projects can they move forward on, uh, which are essentials, what are postponable. 
And then the model on the on the left hand side going down the side, they use some terms slam on the brakes, um, patient, pain but patient, well off and live for today. These same categories, while here used to describe consumer behavior, also can apply to uh, folks that are making capital investment decisions for, for construction projects. So th this type of model, um, I think, has, has a lot of uh, application to specific um, buyer behavior in, in our industry, in our markets. So when it comes to quantifying impact, what I, what I would recommend is running simulations of each scenario. And this is unique to each of your businesses and each of your organizations. So what, like for instance, what would a 30% decline in revenue mean? What would a 30% decline in membership renewals mean? Uh, what if a key client stopped all their spending? What if one of your key organizational sponsors stopped their premier level of sponsorship? What if large projects are canceled? What if key segments are impacting investment slows? I mean, just this week alone, uh, you know, with, with oil dropping into negative territory, you know, it certainly has ripple effects, not only in, in the oil industry, but the chemical industry and all the downstream industries um, that, that re rely on, on oil production and um, different derivatives of oil. And it also has an economic impact in geographies where oil is, is a key part of the economy. So, for instance, in, in Houston and other areas, um, if the oil market uh, continues in a, in a prolonged slump, that's certainly going to have an impact on uh, commercial spending and residential spending and other, other areas. So really, it's important to, to look at different scenarios, try and quantify the impact on, on the markets and business, and determine what actions would you have to take as a company or a trade organization to respond to these different scenarios. Well, one of the one of the quick decisions that companies all too often make is the slam on the brake. Throughout the, the history of, of, um, of our economy, uh, marketing and sales are, are uh, too often some of the first things that get cut. Uh, in many cases, it can be the easiest to cut. Marketing, R&D, research, things like that are, are very easy to cut. But research, has shown that the companies that continue to strategically invest in marketing are the ones that survive challenging economies, the ones that come out of recession stronger, faster than those that, that go in and, and cut recession or cut their marketing spend during recession. Uh, there's been quite a bit of research on this through different recessions. Um, this is a, a different Harvard Business Review article. Um, you can see companies that, that slash their marketing spending often have to spend more later to get back to that same position to to save what they what they recover. So one of the things I like to talk about is marketing can be viewed as a, as an expense, but really looking at marketing as an investment and trying to internally part of our roles as marketers is to bring insight and perspectives to, to leadership and show that marketing is an investment, marketing is a valuable tool and marketing is gonna generate a return. And today that might mean doing some things differently. It might mean reallocating some things or completely cutting some things, but figuring out a way that you can effectively and efficiently use your marketing dollars to generate that return. So why invest in marketing? Well, again, companies that, that cut costs deep and fast had the lowest probability of thriving after a recession. That's based on um, some, some statistics and studies that, that were done for that Harvard Business Review article. Those that thrive during recessions do focus on operational efficiencies, but they continue to invest in marketing, R&D, and new assets. And those new assets could be bringing in a, a key person um, also, you'll see during recessionary times, companies that, that are very, very um, selective on potential acquisitions of, of smaller companies or um, bringing in some key resources. And the other key thing here is if customers can't find you, they're not going to spend with you. And cuts now really make it less likely that a firm or organization is, is going to survive intact or be strong after 
after we come out of uh, challenging times. In reality, this is a great time to invest in marketing. Um, publishers, um, different firms, they're typically willing to negotiate uh, on their price. They're, they're typically willing to offer value added. Um, there, there might be less clutter, meaning that if other people are cutting back some of their advertising and messaging, it, it's easier to get the message through. And also consider shifting dollars, more dollars to, to digital, uh, digital strategies. So a strong brand equals confidence and trust. And during challenging times, people want to work with people and they want to work with companies they have confidence in and they can trust that they're going to deliver on that project to that contractor what their promise is. So again, that strong brand equals that confidence and trust. And if you're not investing in those marketing activities, that strong brand is gonna wane. Thus, in turn, that confidence and trust is, is going to wane. So with that, Tony, I'd like to go ahead and, and ask our second poll question. So the second question is, has your firm reduced your marketing expenditures? Has your firm cut marketing dollars uh, that were originally planned uh, to be allocated here in 2020? Just take a minute here as we get the responses in. Recessions are, are part of an economy. Economic downturns, economic challenging situations are part of, are part of the economy. And there's a, a quote from from uh, an author I, I read a lot, John Maxwell, and, and he talks about how life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. And I think the same thing applies to how we react to challenging situations in, a, in, in an economy. So since, since 1854, there's been 28 recessions. Average recession has lasted about 10 months. Uh, I believe the, the last recession that we've gone through lasted about 21 months. But the, the key fact is the economy will recover. And if we look at we look at these mo the most recent recessions, 1981 to 92 recession, and the first two statistics come from a study McGraw Hill did on companies and how they reacted during recessions um, during those times. And the third point comes from a study that Bain and Company did focused on the last recession. But if you look at the 81, 82 recession, companies that maintained or increased their advertising expenditures averaged significantly higher sales growth during that time. And they grew 256% for two years after. In the, the recession that happened in 89 to 91, companies, again, that increased their ad expenditures grew 15 to 70%. And firms that cut back on their ad expenditures saw a drop in sales from 26 to 64%. And in 2008-2009, uh, Bain's research indicated that the strongest companies were, that went on the offensive while their peers were cutting back and reducing the expenses, the, the ones that were aggressive, that invested, were, were the ones that came out of it uh, the most strongly. So why invest in marketing? We've really got to think about the long term. As I mentioned earlier, that company image brand awareness is, is critical to building that sense of confidence and that sense of trust. Uh, marketing, marketing to me is, is about consistency and frequency, having consistent messages, uh, being visible. And the business of business buying process is long. I uh, just read a, a report uh, just the other day that the, the average manufacturing plant from, um, from the Conceptual feasibility stays to completion. The average project takes 24 to 26 months. So cutting marketing today while people are thinking about expenditures, the buying process is so long that we need to make sure that we're, we're visible um, at all phases of that, that, that buying process. Uh, shifting dollars to, to focus on, on efforts that, that may deliver more results today is something that we need to really think about. And it's also a huge opportunity to gain to gain market share. So a couple of key things, uh, well, I'll just call recommendations or steps that, that I encourage folks to take. Uh, one is supporting your community. We're, we're all uh, being impacted different ways in different parts of the country, uh, but but in reality, this is this is impacting in many many people. Um, consider 
reallocating some resources from your trade show budget or, or your events or money you had budgeted to buy golf balls for the next golf outing. Use those dollars to go support a local business, uh, first responders, healthcare workers, nurses, some programs like that. Um, this is a time when, when people need it. And also help support local businesses. You know, if it's buying um, buying gift cards or, or ordering food or something, it, just do some things to, to support your community. And I'm not, I'm not advocating by any means that you, that you go out and, and tout what you did and, and do a press release on it or even share it on social media. It's not what this is about. This is about involvement and, and being part of a community and being, being willing to, to give back. And marketing messaging, marketing messaging right now is, is really, really, really challenging. Um, there's, there's so much going on from a, a COVID-19 messaging. Certainly the, this crisis has turned the business world upside down. Um, and, and in reality, it, I've talked to several people. I, I think there is a little bit of COVID fatigue, particularly um, communication from companies talking about what their procedures are and their processes and, and the different things that they're doing. But the, the key thing about marketing is we, we do need to change our messaging. We need to be appropriate with relevant messaging. Um, and what, what may have been our, our marketing plan and our intent to deliver messages has got to change. But the key thing is the, the messaging, we need to, need to have consistent visibility and a presence in the marketplace. Because in reality, there's going to be several big firms and small firms firms of all sizes in our industry that won't survive this. Um, there's a one of the leading uh, publicly traded EPC firms I just read last week, you know, they, they adopted a poison pill strategy so that um, they won't be a takeover target. Um, I've, I've heard through a couple organizations of some uh, smaller specialty contractors that are really struggling. So the, the fact of the matter is, uh, unfortunately, there's going to be there will be some fallout from this and there will be firms that aren't around and stability really can't, can't be assumed. But from a marketer perspective, we need to instill confidence to, to our clients and potential clients that the, your company or your organization is there and you're able to support their needs. But again, that, that tone needs to be appropriate. We, we can't be tone deaf. And if you're not, if you need assistance doing that, you know, the folks at AOE, they're, they're professionals. They, they've done this for years. Um, reaching out to one of the team members at AOE to help develop that type of tone and approach and, and that right messaging uh, would, would certainly be a good step. The other thing about messaging during times of crisis is this is when your value proposition should really resonate with, with your customers. There's things that the customers may have taken for granted that if you look at, I, I, I like, I do a, a presentation on, on marketing differentiation. I have a couple examples of, um, of ads from different companies and I cover the logo up. And if you read, you read them, the pictures look the same, the headlines are the same, the messaging is the same. But today in, in crisis, this is where those things that we like to say about quality and safety and reliability and performance, and those things really come out. And from a marketing standpoint, if your company and organization is really truly delivering to that value proposition, delivering that messaging, this is the time to, to really communicate that, but also being able to, to show and prove that and, and being able to deliver that. And part of that too might be needing to engage your operational staff so that they understand the importance of following through on consistent communication and delivering a consistent message for your, for your customers. So again, marketing messaging, really building trust and that confidence is ultimately gonna strengthen the brand for the organization. Thinking long-term, understanding that there is a long buying cycle and uh, customers do wanna be confident with the decisions that they're making. And we also wanna make sure that we have a strong position for when we are coming out of the, uh, the challenging times. So being visible, how do you be visible today? Trade shows are canceled, networking events are canceled. Um, there's just so many things that we've relied on as, as tried and true method, methods and vehicles to be visible have changed. So if you go back to that, that earlier study, uh, two of those earlier studies, people are shifting dollars to content marketing, thought leadership. They're, they're going to virtual networking. 
I was on a virtual networking call this morning uh, with a group of folks that are industrial sales, and you know, we were just talking about best practices and different tools and ideas. Um, those of you that, that work for organizations, I, I know some of you have already gone to these models with the virtual networking and finding ways to add value to your membership. Um, this is something that we need to get good at because I, even if everything were to open up June 1st, the reality is I don't think there's going to be as many events. The events aren't going to be as big and people aren't going to be sending as many people. So we need to be, we as marketers need to be get, get really good at how we do virtual networking and how we're interacting with clients through tools like Zoom and GoToMeet and, and other things. And the way that we interact and communicate with people through those tools is different. So we need to look at what we're doing, how often we're doing it, what's the purpose and what's the return. So content marketing, thought leadership, figuring out how we can replace the, the leads and the connections that we make through industry events and how we can improve that client interaction is critical. So engaging with clients, um, I, I've, I've used some of the tools like Zoom and other virtual tools for, for a while. Uh, but it's it's certainly certainly um, expanded quite a bit. But when it comes to engaging with clients, the the first thing is really to, to seek insights, and some of that is starting out with a, a connection on the personal level and how they personally are dealing with the situation, um, how their their company is responding, and and really getting that that insight. And some of that may come from your operational folks. It may come from your business development folks that are seeking that information. And, and a part of what we can do as marketers is to help them with that messaging and helping them with uh, developing effective questions. Because right now that, you know, that direct sales approach doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't resonate. It's not the right approach. So helping our, helping our team members with effective questions and try and help coach them on what type of insight we, we need to get from customers. Certainly focusing on customer retention. Uh, the current clients we're working on uh, in, in encouraging our our operations and BD people to confirm project scope and schedule and timing and understand what might be going on uh, on their side. And then understand their changing needs and, and how your organization or company can meet their changing needs. You know, focusing on key opportunities and also managing customer psychology. And, and part of that really relates to ensuring that that you as an organization or a company are still able to meet the needs of your members and your and your customers you know, right now it, it's we really can't afford to lose customers we have to understand that their needs are changing and buying decisions are still being made contracts are still being awarded uh, people are still soliciting bids for information rfps and rfis are, are, are still going out um, so their money is going to be spent on value so focus on effectively building those relationships and engaging with clients, albeit that engagement is, is different. So content. We talked a lot about content and what, what, what is content. I know that the, con the term content marketing has been around now for six or seven years and um, it, it takes various forms. But if you look at some of, the, um, some of the studies that I showed earlier, people are shifting dollars to content. I went back to a, a study from Gartner that came out in 2019. So this is about seven months old. They did a study and it talked about complex business to business solution purchases. The majority of them are made in the context of change. Change is happening for a company to invest in something. Their business operations is changing, the competitive landscape, the market demand, the market environment organizational structure companies are, are making decisions based on change and that is is so true when it when it comes to how companies will continue to make investments through this through this current economic downturn and clients value content that's helping them make sense of the disruption that's going on around them so as a marketer for a company or organization the things that we can do to create content that are gonna help our clients, help educate them to understand things or deliver value. That's a key way for us to differentiate and deliver engaging content. So one of the key things in developing that content is developing content that, that can help them gain a greater sense of confidence in your ability as an organization or a company to meet their needs. And as people working from home, they're searching for a whole range of things. 
But more importantly, I think um, people are learning, they're looking to learn. So producing engaging content could be articles, blog content, white papers, webinars, uh, videos and podcasts, infographics. And it's amazing all the tools out there that you can use to create some, some really high quality multimedia content. You know, there's tools for free. We were talking about that on one of the networking calls this morning about some of the different tools to create some, some video content and, and some podcasts. The, the concept here is to, again, deliver informative educational content um, that, is, that is strong message that is not tone deaf, that, that can provide insights and perspectives and continue uh, to help build thought, thought leadership. This also is a great time to reach out to some of your subject matter experts within your organization or company, uh, particularly if they have downtime. Uh, you know, get them on the phone or, or you send them some questions to respond to and, and try and gather some of that content so that um, you, can, you can have that material uh, to develop into, into articles or white papers or, or other content. Reassessing your PR efforts. Um, I, think, I think public relations and, and PR messages are, are critical, uh, both internally and externally at this time, but really, really got to be careful. Um, the, the types of things that, that are, are, are put out there today um, can, can really have a positive impact on a brand or could really hurt a brand, and that, that damage that can be done to a brand can extend far beyond whatever we come out of recession. So first, first piece, piece of advice would be to engage a PR professional. Again, the folks at AOE, others, you know, the, these folks, this is what they do, this is what they're trained to do. Um, but I think we need to consider shifts in the PR mix. And we talked about shifting some things to content. And when it comes to public relations, it, it's still okay to do press releases or put things out on the media, uh, maybe making some of your people available to media as, as experts to provide quotes and provide insights in terms of how you're responding, but it may not be the best time to celebrate a, a significant milestone or or to be over celebratory or or congratulate people internally. Those things still may be important, but it, it might make sense just to delay some of that or or if you're going to do some things to take a little bit of a softer a softer tone. But I, I do think PR and and maintaining vis maintaining visibility through PR efforts is certainly critical. But it, you've got to take a, um, a very prudent approach and certainly encourage you to engage professionals that can help get that right message out. Assessing, assessing existing marketing. As I mentioned, there's certainly opportunities to negotiate better rates, get value added from some of the digital and print channels that you're working with. It could be opportunities to stand out. Um, but the messaging might, you might want to reconsider the, the tone, the visuals and things that you are communicating, but definitely a good time to, to look at different channels. Uh, also look at, look at ways you can focus on improvements and efficiency. Could be reviewing people, processes, systems, the ways that you're doing things. Uh, really assessing where you're getting your return on investment, your marketing dollars, and, and potentially eliminating the ones that are not performing and shifting some dollars. Um, and focus on the results that are that are helping you achieve your overall business goals. And I would encourage each of you to uh, reassess your, your marketing plan for 2020 and, and develop an action plan for what you're going to do the rest of the year. Because what we intended and set out to do at the beginning of the year certainly is different today. So come up with that, that, that plan of action about how you, you're assessing existing marketing and how, how your plans are going to change for the remainder of the year. And also tie in some of those, potentially tie in some of that information from the um, um, discussion we had about um, the scenario planning and looking at how uh, the depth and length of uh, financial challenges in the market can impact our business. This is also a great time to do marketing house cleaning. That could be updating marketing proposal tools, cut sheets, project reports, uh, boilerplate information. A great time to update digital tools, um, creating new content. Um, look at how you can engage your internal people to, to share ideas and information and finally get you that information on the project or finally respond to that Q&A you gave them. Update your buyer personas. Update you know, what, are, what are the descriptions of the people you're going after and, and what how are you developing messaging and differentiation and things are going to resonate with them. 
great time to, to learn a new skill. Uh, many organizations and for-profit entities are offering significant discounts or even offering classes for free. Um, certainly a great time to, to um, learn a new skill or learn something new. And also is a good time to assess talent, assess the business development, marketing talent, and it might might be a time to to upgrade upgrade talent as as we come out of this. So at this point, and also a good time to assess external agencies and external resources that, that you're using. So at this point, our last poll question, I'd like to have Tony go ahead and, and put that up. You know, as companies are uh, going through this assessment and looking at looking at um, all marketing resources, uh, the last poll question is, has your firm reduced marketing staff? So has your firm uh, reduced marketing staff either through um, reduction in force or furloughs uh, or any changes in, in the company or, or trade organization? We'll give that a few more seconds. Okay, thanks, Tony. So key opportunities, you consider looking at, at in-house marketing talent, looking at other folks that, that may unfortunately um, be, be looking for work, um, starting to have some of those conversations. You may not be ready to pull the trigger and hiring somebody, but um, could be a good time to reach out to some people on LinkedIn or people that might become available. Uh, potentially consider outsourcing, um, certainly looking at some things that you're you're doing. If you did reduce staff and there's more responsibilities we have to manage, um, outsourcing. Uh, also an opportunity to launch uh, campaigns that might be a little bit different. Good opportunity to build media relationships, reaching out to editors, writers, um, folks that own websites um, to, to build those relationships. And also opportunities to get involved with, with organizations. I know many um, trade organizations have, have um, they're doing virtual town hall meetings and are looking for speakers, they're looking for presenters to talk about how companies are responding to that. Um, I know that in, in many states, um, I'm, I'm in South Carolina, uh, South Carolina just formed a, a group called Accelerate SC, and that's a, a group that is um, consists of uh, business leaders and uh, public officials that are, that are meeting um, to really look at the different the different industries and look at what what we need to do to get to to come out of this and re, kind of restart the economy. So there's different organizations and different opportunities for you uh, as a marketer or for you to get leadership of your firm involved in some of these organizations. The marketing marketing really shouldn't stop uh, in, a, in a dynamic economy. Uh, in reality. Change is constant. There's always change. There's always uncertainty. And downturns, while they're challenging, uh, they're they're part of they're part of business and part of the economy. Uh, some businesses and some markets will be fundamentally changed. The, the ways that we're used to doing things are going to change. And uh, we 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 should be uh, key leaders in our organizations to help anticipate the change, help interpret the change and bring some insight to the leaders in our organization so that they have the right information upon which to make decisions. Our competition is gonna change. Um, I, I don't know how that's gonna change, but I'm, I'm pretty confident uh, competitors are, are gonna have different offerings and moving into different markets, maybe exiting some markets. Um, the market conditions are, are fluid, so the anticipating change is, is um, critical and being comfortable with that change and realizing that we have to adopt our business models. But more importantly, you know, I think um, one of the key things is we need to continue to market. Uh, we need to, we as marketers and marketing leaders at our organization, uh, really need to do a little bit of internal marketing and, and help our folks internally understand the value of why we need to market and why we need to remain visible with, um, with our clients and maintain consistency in the marketplace. So with that, we'll um, go ahead and look at our poll results. Tony, if you could pull those up for us. Sure, uh, I can see our poll results here. And the first question, how has your firm delayed or paused a marketing initiative? 61% voted yes, and 39% voted no. 
for the second question, has your firm reduced marketing expenditures? 23% voted yes and 77% voted no. And for the last question, has your firm reduced marketing staff? 20% voted yes and 80% voted no. Okay. Great, thanks for, for sharing everybody um, what, what your firms are doing. So just to recap, 61% um, have, have paused or delayed an initiative. Um, only 23% or, or nearly a quarter companies have reduced their expenditures and one in five or 20% have, um, have reduced staff. So that, that's um, good good insight. And I think, I think those numbers were somewhat consistent with some of the external research and information I had shared. Um, certainly be very interested in seeing how, how this uh, continues here the next um, next couple months and weeks as, um, as as things continue to change. So, Tony, um, I'd like to go ahead and, and take a few questions. I think we have a few minutes here to take a few questions. Sure. We have a question here. How can you share this type of information or message with leadership related to the role of marketing? Any tips on helping them understand how important marketing is to the comeback? Certainly. So, um, you know, when, when sharing you know, sharing this type of information, some of the the studies and things that I share, I, I think um, the key the key to convincing anyone is is having evidence and proof. And um, I think going in and and saying, hey, we need to continue spending on marketing, is one thing. But going in and saying we need to invest in marketing and this is why this is because this is how um, we're going to change the investment here's what we're going to focus on here's what we expect the results to be and then backing it up with some of that um, research um, about previous recessions and and how folks have um, uh, have come out of that and i don't mean i don't mean dropping 100 pages on someone's desk but just very succinctly um, maybe doing a, a one-page write-up with some key information, statistics, maybe even having um, some links to some of the research, and asking for some time to come in and have a, have a discussion. And that 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 approach of of making recommendations, talking about how you're making the changes, what do you anticipate the results to be, and then providing some of the, that evidence and supporting materials to back it up, I think would would be a good start. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Where do I start when assessing our marketing efforts? So hopefully, hopefully um, you, you've been using different tools to, to track um, track results from different marketing efforts, be it digital, social media, email campaigns, retargeting, um, or or even advertising and trade publications. Um, yeah, I would I would certainly look back historically and look at look at what types of statistics you've had the last couple of years, look at where you are year to date, but more importantly, look at what has changed the last six to eight weeks. Um, I, I did I did a I did three email campaigns last week. Uh, they were very focused and targeted and I did some A B testing on those. Um, to I was just curious to see what, what people were going to interact with from a content perspective. And um, yeah, they were they were pretty basic campaigns, um, but but the campaigns that had the video content, the engagement was much higher, the click through rate was much higher, and you know from from that, I mean, while that's not statistically relevant research, doing things like that, doing some A/B testing and trying some things can certainly give you a good a good perspective on what what might be working. Also, talk to your colleagues, um, reach out through your, your social networks, reach out through your trade organizations. Because we're all in the in these same situations. Um, you know, again, I was fortunate to be on an industrial networking call this morning, and one of the key things we talked about is what what is working and what are you trying. And um, again, so starting with starting with your historical information, kind of looking at a snapshot of where you are today, looking at what what some peers are doing, and also look at look at some uh, third party research and what others might be doing in the industry. Uh, the third question, Brian, trade shows and networking events were a big part of our marketing activities. Now that they're canceled, what should we do? <laughs> well, it, that's a that's a great question, and um, you know, I'm I'm a um, 
regular attendee of uh, some large national shows, um, regional shows, and the networking events. And you know, personally, have found them over my career to be tremendously valuable in terms of meeting people, developing relationships, and, all, and also learning. Um, so it, for the foreseeable future, you know, that that is that that opportunity is is gone from the physical environment. But what what I've seen is many organizations are starting to move towards some virtual events. Um, try those out and participate. Um, some of them are doing virtual networking events. Um, I, I, I have one uh, tomorrow evening um, that's focused on economic development where we're just all dialing into Zoom and the facilitator is going to be asking some questions. Potentially try and, try and facilitate or start one of those. Go partner with some other companies or partner with a trade organization uh, to do some of that networking. Um, from a, from a uh, sales perspective, um, using, going in and finding people, I, I think using more, more tools like spending more time and doubling down on LinkedIn, maybe investing in things like LinkedIn Sales Navigator to identify um, key folks and influencers and join, join a networking group where you can share leads and share information. Um, I'm, I'm part of one and, and um, when you've got folks in a networking group, you, you may have 20 more people that are out hearing things and getting information. Um, and then from a, if you're a firm that likes to go and present and speak at, at events and things, um, invest in some webcasts, uh, develop some webcast content, do some things that, that, are, that are live events, do some recorded events, uh, post some of those on your website, host some virtual forums. Um, I think you'll be surprised by the, um, the amount of people that have interest in time and that do participate in these. Thank you so much. Uh, one more question. How can we change our public relations to deliver an effective message but not be tone deaf? That's a that's a that's a challenging question and that um you know that that messaging is different for everybody in terms of, of your your organization, uh what you historically what your what your uh messaging tone and approach has been and also looking at your audiences. Um, before sending anything out, one, the first thing I would do is, is engage a, a professional um, who, who is experienced and seasoned and understands this. Uh, develop some different messaging, but before you send anything out, let others inside the organization and maybe some, some trusted people outside your organization look at, look at what you're saying and ask them some feedback and, and almost do a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of, of research, if you will. Uh, to see how people react to it or how it might be interpreted. While we may be, we may be wanting to do things with the best intentions, um, it, it's important to get perspectives about how things resonate. And, and two, right now, I think if you look at, if you look at just consumer, uh, the TV, you're seeing a lot more uh, COVID-specific advertising and things. And, and part of it, too, we need to avoid being being uh, trite with some of the messaging. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, hey, we're all in this together or we're going to move through this together. And I'm not saying that's a bad message, but um, un understanding that there needs to be a message, but we also want to do something that, that might be a little bit different or might resonate a little bit differently. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So is there any other ideas or comments you would like to share with our audience before we finish our presentation today? Well, I, I would I would I would suggest um, view view this as as an opportunity, an opportunity to learn. Um, I don't think there's there's not a playbook for this. There's not a playbook for how marketing should respond to COVID-19, but there are proven processes and methods on how to deal with challenges, challenging economies and deal with messaging, um, engage resources, talk to people, network, um, share ideas and learn. Um, I think people want to, want to engage with other people, share ideas. And if you're, you're not sure where to start, again, engage a professional and get, um, get, 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 perspectives, ideas, and input from, from multiple sources. Oh, before we end, uh, one of our participants is asking if the slide deck will be available to the attendees. It's fine with me. However, however um, AOE would like to disseminate it is fine with me. If you want to reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn, feel free. Um, you know, and if they have any specific questions or follow-up or 
um, looking for some examples or access to some resources, just um, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to, to share whatever I can. Thank you so much, Brian, and thanks to all our participants for joining us today. Please remember to fill out our brief uh, feedback survey that you will see as we exit the webinar. Uh, goodbye, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.